Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I have an amazing video for you today. I hope you like slightly potentially outdated tier lists. <laughs> okay, here's the deal. I've been working on a tier list for the last two weeks. I had help from my good friend Deadpool, who's been putting the graphics together for me. I was hoping to get this out before the release of the Alice Legendary. Looks like my timing is utterly sh So, here we are. However, I'm not gonna let my hard work go to waste. I'm gonna do the tier list anyway. Just bear in mind, there's gonna be a couple of characters missing from the time this releases, and that's gonna be the Alice and Wonderland crew, except for the March Hare and the White Rabbit. Okay, so basically, tier list ranking every character from S tier through to F tier, looking at every single game mode in the game with a higher weighting to raids, expeditions, PVP, Sorcerer's Tournament, and then taking into account other game modes like Ascension, Towers, Conquest. In any case, there might be a shift in the meta. I'm gonna go out on a whim and say Alice is gonna be S tier, so you wanna farm for her. But I think I've put something great together for you. I still think it's gonna be useful regardless. So please watch the video, like it, subscribe if you like the content. Hey, comment what you think is gonna change with this new meta. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Let's get into the tier list. All right, guys, so we're starting with the F tier. And just to let you know, the bottom right is the worst and the top left is the best. So we're working from right to left, essentially, from the bottom upwards. So I didn't really want to spend too much time on this tier. We've got four of the dwarfs here needed for the Snow White event. I will caveat by saying they are F tier, but if you want Snow White, you're going to have to farm them. They're just so useless. They absolutely suck as characters. It's very frustrating that Glue made them so poorly. You're going to get that with some legendaries. On the next tier, we've got both Cogsworth and Mrs. Potts, two absolutely useless characters again. And then we're going to have Phil as well and he's going to be accompanied by Hermes a little bit further up. Two characters needed for Hercules. There is a bit of a theme when it comes to legendaries. We'll always get at least one or two completely useless characters and this makes up the majority of the F tier. So next up we have the D tier and you can see at the bottom of the D tier we've got another two dwarfs, Bashful and Dopey. Now as dwarfs they're not as terrible as the other ones, Bashful actually does assist Snow White quite frequently and does pack a punch and Dopey can just be used to cleanse your team. Snee is the worst Peter Pan character. Unfortunately we've got Winnie the Pooh and Eeyore next. Now even if we remove the insane amount of bugs that we've got on Winnie the Pooh, both these characters just don't don't do enough. They're, they're highly paywalled and they have no use in this game. Their one use is in Conquest, but it's a defensive team, so you can't even enjoy them on offense. You can use them on defense in Sorcerer's Tournament, but they're not going to be any better than a Prince's team currently, so honestly, just avoid these characters, guys, or slow farm them. You don't need them. On the next tier, we've got some Lion King characters. We've got Simba, Scar, and Rafiki. Now Simba used to be a great tank once upon a time in this game, but as the game progressed, he didn't progress with it and he just fell off the radar completely. Scar, never been a fan of him, his hyenas are too weak. So on the next tier we've got Anger and we've got Dale. Now I do like Rescue Rangers, but if you're going to leave a character out, which you can do, it's going to be Dale. Dale just doesn't do enough with his kit. Next to him, we've got Cusco. Now Cusco just really doesn't do much of anything. He is okay. He's pretty good in Conquest, but that's the only bit of use you'll get out of him in the game. Pete is quite a good Summoner's Showdown character. Both Pete is good for Ascension and Gaston, a reasonably good tank, but just not enough use for me to rank him any higher in the game. Now, we move on to the C tier. Now this is where things start to get a bit more interesting. These characters do have use in the game and generally speaking, are decent characters. I wouldn't say it's problematic to farm them. Now, obviously this tier is quite large, so I'm just gonna pick out some of the characters that I think are worth a mention. So, we've got Doc. Now, you'll think, why the hell did I put Doc on this tier? The reason being is he's a sorcerer's chosen. So Doc is actually quite important in this game. He's an easy win for 
a sorcerer's chosen for the Olympus raid. However, I will say he's the worst sorcerer's chosen and his kit is just as about as good as the other dwarfs. Very, very subpar and useless character and you should be annoyed at glue for putting such useful characters in the game. Then we got some kingdom characters next to him, Lumiere and Aladdin, both reasonably good characters, actually all right in some of the showdown, can be used in PvP. Aladdin's got some synergy with Jasmine as well, but as far as kingdom characters go, they're not the best. Then if we move on to the tier above, we've just got some solid tech characters. We've got Korra, Wasabi, Fred, Yokai, all do reasonable amount of damage. I do really like Big Hero 6. Yokai has some use in Conquest and his spires can be really, really useful if you pair him up with someone like Dr. Facilier. Just mass heal your team. Cruella, one of my favorite characters to use in Raid for getting both Ursula and Hades empowered. And poor Sven, he's the first Frozen character. Used to be one of the most important Frozen characters, but got a big nerf which made him far less useful. He used to be a meta character in raids but unfortunately they done him dirty and Sven's dropped off. Just above that we've got Mordu who in my opinion makes a fantastic tank in some of the showdown. We've then got Chip and Monterey Jack. Honestly rescue rangers make a decent team and deserve to be on this tier. March Hare makes this list next to the other mythicals. Pegasus, Meg and Manticore. Now, I really like Meg when she's paired with Hercules, but pairing her up with Hercules can be quite niche now. Manticore has a use in Expeditions, and also with the current Oceanic Damage leaderboard, she's the most important character in order for you to get the highest damage. I'm not gonna tell you how that one works. Go figure it out. I love Scrooge. I really wish I could rate him higher. Scrooge was an amazing counter to Sen6 way back when but he's just fallen off a little bit. Ariel is gonna be your big damage dealer for the Oceanic leaderboard. And because she's a princess, she does get a bit higher ranking. And now at the top of C tier, we've got two kingdom villains. We've got Kronk and we've got Mother Gothel. I actually really like both of these characters. I generally think Kronk's rework was better than most people think. I really like using Kronk and Yizmo in some of the showdown together. I do think they work really, really well. And Mother Gothel, She's got a very interesting kit. I do like what she can do, but she's just not as good as some of the other kingdom villains. Jasmine can be a great tank for your team. And Jack Sparrow got an amazing charm and a pretty good AoE, but you need to have him really gear nine in order to make any use out of him. I just think there are other better oceanics over him. He is an adventurer though, so that does make him a little bit more desirable. And then we got the Incredibles family. I actually really like the Incredibles. We'll pinpoint Violet because she has such a use in raids. Violet can be amazing in a genie team and she's one of the characters that makes that team tick. In the same way, Pasha can also be used to do the same job that Violet does, which is why he's rated quite highly. And last but not least, we have Judy. Now, my club mate will be very unhappy that I've ranked Judy in the C tier. She actually can counter Maleficent team, so she gets a spot at the top of the C tier. Now guys, moving on to the B tier. Now this is where we really start to see use out of characters. At the bottom, we've got three frozen characters. All of them are great in their own right. Now, Olaf is a sorcerer's chosen and he's not a bad sorcerer's chosen. He goes really, really well in the Eve team that does massive damage on Tornado Titan. Then next to him, we've got Kristoff. Kristoff makes an actual really good tank. He can be used in multiple areas in the game. He is a fantastic defensive unit for leaderboards. He also can be used in raids in a Mike Wazowski Sully team. Then we've got the final member of the Winnie the Pooh cast. We've got Tigger. Tigger actually does have some use. He can do quite well in raids and he's the one that ramps up the damage for this Winnie the Pooh team on defense when Winnie the Pooh's leadership does actually work. Gadget is a solid, solid raid character. She used to be a key cog in the machine that made the Forbidden Depths raid soloable. However, she was just paywalled and it was only recently that I got her to seven star. She's extremely difficult to get, but she's an adventurer. She's got some raid use, so a solid addition to the B tier. Next up, we've got two raid characters. Now, Shank is amazing in an Ian team and in the same way, Woody is also amazing in an Ian team in the Siege of Olympus. So both solid additions there. On the next level above, we've got some Oceanic characters. We've got both Pan and Tinkerbell. Now Pan is probably quite lucky to be on this tier. Generally speaking, he is a very solid character. 
but his use in the game is a little bit limited. Tinkerbell on the other hand, she can be used in raids to help your genie team. Next up, Stitch, Randall, Shere Khan, all solid characters that can be used in raids. Quasimodo, really like Quasi, can passively taunt, just get very, very annoying. He's one of the best summoner showdown characters, I will say, whenever he is a pick. After him, we've got Gogo and Honey Lemon. Love these two. Because Hero's speed lead is the fastest in the game, when she is at G9, she is just mega quick. And when paired with someone like Eve, they can do so much damage to you in both PvP and as a conquest defense. Honey Lemon, applying those slows, super important character. Next up, we've got two more adventurers. Now we've got Raya and Lily. Both very, very solid characters, both extremely useful in expeditions. Lily isn't really much without Frank though, which is why she is down in the B tier. Then we've got Daisy and Davy, both very, very solid characters. Davy is one of the best Summoner Showdown characters. Daisy is amazing with Donald Duck in raids and as a Sen6 team defense. Then we got some mythicals. We've got Madam Mim, Queen of Hearts, Oogie Boogie and Horn King. Now the latter three are all sorcerers chosen and generally speaking, not bad characters. So definitely worthy of the spot in the B tier. Next to them, we have Eric and Eric is a very, very solid character in general. He was a key cog in the slap zone team. So big fan of him. And then on the top of the B tier, we've got Pocahontas. Now Pocahontas is amazing. She is a key component of the Elsa bomb. Sergeant Calhoun, who makes Solo in the Forbidden Depths raid, very, very possible. We've also got Gizmo, who makes the Eve team possible in raids. We've got Jafar, whose hourglass completely destroys in the Olympus raid. And he also makes a very, very solid character for Kingdom Villains. Belle, she is a princess, probably not going to be used alongside the other princesses for one of the meta teams. But when she's paired with Beast, she is phenomenal. And generally speaking, one of the best basics in the game, being able to call two characters to assist. I do think Belle was a little bit unlucky to be in this tier, but she just falls short of a few of the other princess characters, in my opinion. Then next up, we've got Baloo. Now, Patrick will be very happy. He'll probably want to rank Baloo higher, but nonetheless, I do really like Baloo's kit. I think his assist with offense up is amazing. He can heal and he can be part of this crazy Demona team that does over a million damage in raids and this is why Demona takes the top of the B tier. Full disclosure I really don't like her she's a bit awkward to use but she can put in massive damage in the raids. She's the reason you're gonna get massive damage in the Gargoyles leaderboard. She works really well in a Gargoyles team in general. She's got some pretty solid damage and Chunk. Now Chunk is amazing. He lands fear on the Rock Titan even through the crazy tenacity the Rock Titan has. In my opinion Chunk is probably a little bit unfortunate to make the B tier as well but nonetheless I think he's very very solid tank. He taunts every other turn. He is extremely key in getting you through the Toy Story bit in Ascension. I generally think Chunk is a fantastic character, so he is one you must farm for raids and just must farm in general. And now we've made it to the A tier, guys. Now, these characters are all must farm, in my opinion. So the bottom two on this tier are gonna be Jack Skeleton and Sally. Sally is the reason the Ian team works well or even at all. And Jack is the reason you can land fear on the rock head. He's just more consistent and easier to use than Chunk. Chunk can still get passively resisted. Jack can't. Outside of raids though, they're not that great. They don't really have much use, but they're so fundamental to raids, which is why they make the bottom of this A tier. Next to them, we've got two of the best supports in the game. We've got Barley and we've got Bubbles. Barley being able to pass the book and give crit power up and a guaranteed crit. He's just an unbelievable support. His basic can call three assists, so yeah, deserves this spot on his list easily. Next to him, we've got Bubbles. Now Bubbles again, you can pass tactics and offense up to any character he wants. He gains a lot of turn meter when other characters are being hit. Very, very, very solid support. Maui, now Maui has the best oceanic leadership. You know, pair him with Moana and they make a very, very solid team in all game modes, whether it be PvP, whether it be Conquest, or whether it be Raids. Maui's leadership in Raids is very bulky and very useful. And then last on the bottom of this A tier, we've got both Merlin and Triton. Triton is an unbelievable Raid character. 
in the same way that Merlin is. Generally speaking, he has better use than Sally and Jack outside of raids, so that's why he is a little bit higher than them two. On the tier above, we've got Gantu, who is an amazing character that does an insane amount of damage in any game mode. We've got Namari next to him. Now, Namari is very, very solid in a Shan Yu Kingdom team, and she's one of the best to use in a Kingdom Villain PvP team. Next to her, we've got Dr. Fazilia and Goliath. Now, these two together, alongside Xanatos, who's just a little bit further up, and Demona. Like the gargoyles make a very very solid pvp team dr facilia in general his leadership is super op it's very very bugged right now and he might not be this high up if he didn't have his buggy leadership but there's no denying his usefulness as a character in rage you can pretty much get an empowered run on one of the titans in about 30 seconds to a minute max the damage because of his buggy leadership is just ridiculous then we've got dash now dash is another fantastic character in all game modes very very solid on rock titan in the same way we've got both mickey and donald next to him sen6 still makes a very solid defense and both these characters are very very solid raid characters donald can put up big numbers on Rock Titan. And then we got the White Rabbit. Now, I just did a video on White Rabbit recently, so go check that one out, but unbelievable mythical character. Speeds up your team, lands insane amount of debuffs on your enemies. Incredible character and one you must farm now. Then just above him, we've got Miguel, Hades, and Pain and Panic. Mythicals are the next best team, in my opinion, after Kingdom and after Princesses. Machine Gun Hades does so much damage in raids on Rock Titan one of the best teams there. And Miguel is just a fantastic leader, can heal your team back up and has one of the best leaderships in the game. Then we got a couple of characters next to him. We've got Xanatos, which I spoke about briefly. Insanely fast, the gargoyles he can summon are amazing taunters. He does a lot of damage on his basic and in general is just an extremely versatile character that can be used in so many game modes. He's very, very good in raids. He's very, very good in PvP. He can be used as part of a solid counter to princesses under a hero leadership. I'm a huge fan of him. And then we've got Powerline, Max Goof, and Milo. I love these characters. The Milo bomb just absolutely destroys and can eat up a princess team. I don't know anyone that has a power line at Severed Star, but I do think he's gonna break the Siege of Olympus because of how he can stack those charges. I think Max Goof is probably one of the most underrated characters in the game. All the helpful effects he can spread out on your team. He's another character I think that we haven't quite seen the best of him, but very, very, very solid character and I think worthy of the spot in the A tier. Then the last three characters on this penultimate level, we've got Frozone, we've got Wendy, and we've got Maurice. Now all of these are just enablers. Wendy is one of the best characters in the game for being able to shadow someone like Sally. Maurice as well being able to clone G copies. And Frozone can be used in so many different game modes. You can basically make him Elsa Bomb. His slows, his undefeatables, everything that he does as a character in raids is phenomenal. Then at the top of the A tier, we've got a couple of Kingdom characters. We've got Frollo, Esme, Yzma and Mulan. Mulan is unfortunate to be on the A tier. I just don't think she offers as much as some of the other princess characters, but because princesses are meta, I do think Mulan is very deserving to be high up on this A tier and fairly unlucky not to be on the S tier. Frollo is massively bugged at the minute, but the bug works really, really in his favor. And it means that if he gets a turn, whether you're Kingdom Villains or whether you're in raids, his archers can just do an insane amount of damage. He also works really well in a Machine Gun Hades team. Esme is a phenomenal Kingdom character. She was one of the first characters that really made a difference in the Siege of Olympus because of how useful she was against Tornado Titan. So she's very deserving of this spot. Yzma, one of my favorite, if not my favorite, Kingdom Villain character. She's so fast, she's always gonna start first. So she is fairly meta in PvP. She can be used to counter princesses and she just has the best rework that any character has had in this game so far. Next up, we got Mike and Sully. Now Mike and Sully can be used to make a 1 million plus damage raid team and they're very, very solid in other game modes like PvP. I've been destroyed by a Mike and Sully team in PvP before. Mike is a phenomenal sorcerer's chosen and Sully is just a raid beast and these two are very deserving to be at the top of the A tier. And then the last three, we've got Lightyear, Baymax, and we've got Beast. Now, Lightyear 
makes a solid counter to princesses. He is one of the few characters on this list that I don't have, but I've trusted in my club mates who say this guy is the real deal. He's very, very hard to kill, and he's got an exceptionally fast speed lead, which can be used to counter princesses. Now, Baymax is, in my opinion, one of the best tanks for actually being able to tank in the game. He's so versatile. He has an AoE cleanse, which is incredible. He is a very, very key component in a Snow White princess counter using Legendary Soup. His patient ability is phenomenal. Put that on someone like Hercules and Hercules goes to another level of tankiness. Also very, very good in raids as well, especially when you do need just someone who's gonna be able to take a beating. Baymax is the perfect character. And then lastly, on this A tier, and I can already see some people being annoyed with my ranking here, but Beast. Now Beast, in my opinion, can do everything very, very well, but he just doesn't quite do enough to make the S tier. His viability in raids was a little bit lost when Eve and Genie both hit the scene. As a character, he has a fantastic kit and he can be used to counter princesses. However, I will say I don't generally come across many issues facing Beast. I do think he's fallen off. So I'm sorry guys, but Beast is A tier in my opinion. Right guys, now we hit the creme de la creme of Disney Sorcerer's Arena, the S tier. Now let me go through each one of these individually. They all deserve their praise. And you might be surprised by one or two of them. Now, in my opinion, Eve is very deserving of being on this tier. I understand that Genie has made her a little bit redundant in raids. However, it hasn't reduced her viability completely. I still think if you have decided to go the route of farming Eve, you've still got a very solid character in raids. And outside of raids, she does a lot. She is fantastic in conquest as a defense offensive unit. She's also really, really good on offense and she can be used in PVP. She can be used under a light year leadership and in general is a very, very solid counter to Snow White because of the fact that she can passively kill any summons. So if you're fighting Snow White and they're trying to loop you, Eve closes the loop. She'll kill the cauldron and she'll make it impossible for Snow White to effectively loop and get going. I think Eve is well deserving of her spot on the S tier. Next up we have Ian. Now I don't think I really need to explain why Ian is on this tier. Ian is a raid god. He is one of the best characters in the game in raids. And even outside of raids, he has some use. Like if you pair him up with Bali, he can completely wipe teams but his primary use is raids and there's only one better character than him in raids and that's genie ian for the longest time was destroying the forbidden depths raid and he was the first character which we took to the next level in siege of olympus creating those 1 million plus damaged teams. Ian is phenomenal. Next up, we have both Ralph and Elsa. Now, Ralph is one of the best PVP characters in the game. He just falls short because he doesn't have as much raid use. Doesn't mean to say he doesn't have any raid use. You can still use him in raids, but just don't expect big numbers from him. I still think he's very deserving of his spot in the S tier. Because of how useful he is in PVP, I do think that he makes a solid Snow White counter. His ability to remove magic and his game over ability can't go understated. And then in the same way, we've got Elsa. Now Elsa is amazing in raids and she's amazing in PVP. The only reason she dropped off a bit is because of Snow White. Snow White kit is basically a direct counter to Elsa. Otherwise, Elsa was fairly unstoppable really, but she's still excellent in raids and she's been the most resilient of any legendary so far. She's stood the test of time. I do love Elsa and I think she's very deserving of this spot. Then we got Moana. Now Moana makes this list because she is a princess. She's part of the meta princess team and she's incredible in raids as well. She's a very, very easy in power. Her basics do insane amount of damage. Very solid character using both the PVP meta and raids. She's also an adventurer making her very, very useful in expeditions. So very, very deserving of the spot. Now Shan Yu makes the S tier because of his leadership. And as a character, he's genuinely very solid. Like his headbutt can just one shot characters very, very easily. But his leadership is what makes him shine. He can be used in raids effectively, but really it's PvP where he's gonna really come into his element. There are so many amazing Kingdom characters, including Snow White, 
which you can run under his leadership and it's the reason that he is well and truly embedded in this tier and then on the level above we've got frank and zerg now frank is a very good leader, very solid in raids, can be used in a legendary soup counter to Snow White. Frank was one of the most annoying characters when he got first released, I really hated him. But fortunately now we have a fair few counters for him. The problem with Frank is if you let him get going, you can barely stop him. He is a bit of a freight train and he's got so much turn meter removal on his kit that if you unfortunately let him get a turn, that might be your last turn in the game. Zerg, he is just a phenomenal character. He was my counter to Snow White when I didn't have Snow White. Zerg can basically double kill on his first turn. He's got an unbelievably strong passive that can put Snow White into stasis when he pops off. His Zerg vision will take out one character and then his rapid iron blaster will take out another and also splash damage other characters next to him. Zerg is phenomenal. He's also fantastic in raids under a Dr. Facilia lead. He is one of the reasons you can get this 30 second in power because he does so much damage under his leadership. He works really, really well with this guy to the left of him. Hero is fastest lead in the game. And at G9, his leadership is one of the only few semi-reliable counters to Snow White. His micro barriers can be used really, really effectively in raids. He is a key component of the Genie team. Hero absolutely deserves a spot here. Then we've got some girls to finish up the rest of this level. We've got Rapunzel, Ursula, Tiana and Kidder. Now Rapunzel and Tiana, no questions asked on why they're here. They make up part of this disgusting princess team that's been destroying the meta of late. Ursula is just a phenomenal oceanic character, as is Kidda. You've seen recently what I could do with Kidda in raids with Genie on Rock Titan. Kidda, in general, if you can get her empowered, a little bit like Ursula actually, if you can get her empowered, they both go to another level and are very, very difficult to deal with. So massive use in raids, massive use in PvP, can be used anywhere in the game. And now the cream of the crop, the best characters in the game. We have got six characters left. And starting with Genie, I need not explain myself why Genie is so high up in this list. You know, you could argue he should be higher. Effectively, Genie is a raid god. The fact that he can solo titans alone, he's the best character in raids, hands down. Not only that, Genie can actually be used in PvP. Under a Shanyu lead, he can be used successfully in PvP. He's not even just a raid specific character in my opinion. Although raids alone, similar to Ian, puts him well and truly comfortable in this S tier. And he's very, very deserving to be this high up. Next to him, we've got Merida. Now, Merida is your damage dealer in a princess team. She can do insane amounts of damage in the raid. And she's the reason princess teams are so awful to fight against. Yes, Snow White is the key component to the princess team, but her damage can just wipe you out almost instantly. It's not even fair. She's just disgusting to fight against and very, very deserving of this top level. Next to her, we've got Maleficent. Now, Maleficent fell off a tiny bit once Snow White was released, but she's probably one of the most useful leaderships in the game in something like Conquest, where characters start with all these horrible buffs. She wipes them all out and gives them helpful immunity. Her dragon is insane. You can't let her get going in PvP. She lays down the debuff. She puts so much continuous damage down and she is fantastic in rage. She was a key component in one of the original Ian teams. Her enthrall is insane and also a very, very good counter to Snow White. If you can kill Snow White while she's enthralled, she won't go into stasis. And then we've got this man here, Hercules, and his father Zeus to the left of him. Hercules, man, he has just stood the test of time. When he was first released, he practically ruined the game because of how good he was. All these protects that he gains and the fact that it was bugged and once he gets empowered, he is just an unstoppable freight chain. He's also one of the only few reliable counters to Snow White. He will passively counter her and sometimes kill her. He can take an absolute beating as well. And as a raid character, extremely solid and can take you decent amount of damage above empowered. Next to him, his father Zeus. Zeus is the ultimate prize for beating Siege of Olympus on Heroic and a very, very worthy prize indeed. An incredible character, does so much damage, cleanses your team. You can loop with him still, which is very, very annoying, don't do it. The fact he starts any battle with invulnerable is so annoying, it's super hard to deal with. 
means you can't kill him straight away unless you get lucky with Merida and get her empowered before he takes a turn. He elevates any team that he's in and he dominates the game in pretty much any game mode, whether it's raids, you know, as part of a genie team, PVP as part of soup or mythicals or whatever, an incredible character and one that you really should focus on unlocking with getting yourself to heroic in the Siege of Olympus. And last but not least, we've got Snow White, who I don't think I really need to say much about her. She's just ridiculous, beyond overpowered. I personally think Glue did a terrible job with her design. I think they made her too good. The fact that she can still loop your team, she can practically solo teams by herself on defense and conquest. She can really take princess teams to another level in raids. She is the reason princesses are meta. She stops Elsa bombs. She just does everything, guys. And sleep in death must be one of the most annoying passives we've ever had to deal with in the game. Snow White is just beyond broken as a character and she ain't gonna be fixed anytime soon. She's very bugged out, but the bugs all work in her favor. She's sometimes unkillable, which kind of sucks. But ultimately, there's no better character in this game. There's no one that comes close to her in this game. She is my top pick. I'm so, so hopeful that Alice makes her somewhat redundant. I doubt it. All right, guys, that's my video today. A video so long, I even managed to change outfit. I'm going to bring up the tier list on a graphic now. This is what is going to be shared in Discord. If you want the individual graphics as well, let me know. So here we are. This is my tier list, the Gaza tier list. As I said, unfortunately, I got my timing wrong. So the Alice legendary has happened. This might change a couple things, but you can look forward to that in the coming weeks. I will obviously update this tier list with the Alice tunes. I might do this as a monthly video. We'll see how this goes as a segment. If you enjoyed it, please give me a like, comment down below what you think and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.